Hello and welcome. I'm Deborah Bronstad and this is Hope for Holiday Grief Part 2, where today I'm going to talk about some ideas that you can implement to help remember your loved one, uh, some ways to honor them, and just lots of ideas today. Um, in Part 1, we looked at how you create a holiday plan so that you can be proactive when your world is rocked by grief rather than reactive. And so in yesterday's video, which I'll um, uh, later I'll post a link to if you didn't get to see it, but um, it will it talks about some of the ways that you can communicate ahead of time, plan ahead of time, so that the, the holidays don't just happen to you, but that you can prepare. So my goal today is to help you be thoughtful about um, your experience of the holidays. There is no right or wrong way to celebrate Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah or New Year's. Um, there, there's no right or wrong way. And especially after the loss of a loved one, there's choices that you get to make around that. And I want to help you today think through some of those choices and, um, and then be intentional about how you handle the holidays. Um, if I'm, I thought this call would be about 15 minutes. Now it's looking like I have enough material for about a half an hour. And so if you don't get to stay for the whole video, I will be posting it and um, you'll be able to look at the replay later. As you listen, I want to, uh, whether it's live or uh, on Facebook or it's a video later, um, I want to invite you to leave a comment about what, uh, which of some of these ideas that you might put in practice. Uh, especially if I want to, uh, if you have an idea you want to implement, you might get a pen and paper out and just jot some notes down. Um, if you have an idea that maybe I didn't share, or maybe you've already used one of these ideas, I want to encourage you to um, jot a note to uh, in the comments below and, and share with us how did it work out. Maybe you've got some new ideas to, to add and I'd love to get your input. Well, let's start with some ways to um, include memories in your celebration. Um, and I also have some ideas if you're alone for the holiday um, and some ideas that might work for you to help it make, make it not as um, much of a lonely time. So some ways to start um, to include memories in your celebration might be to have a display of pictures of your loved one. And uh, one of the uh, uh, encouragements that I've seen is that just to be careful that when you're putting those pictures of deceased loved ones that you also include in your display pictures of living family members because there are family members who will count how many pictures you have and especially children and they'll be paying attention to that and so include your living family members as well. You could decorate a wreath with items or photos that remind you of your loved one. Uh, during a holiday celebration, you could light a candle or give a toast in their name. You could have a moment of silence to honor them. Uh, you could also invite a friends and family to share memories of your loved one. And sometimes these can be uh, funny memories and really enjoyable uh, times. And you might even want to uh, audio or video record these uh opportunities to share memories because it could be something that's precious for you even after the holiday to to just remember and laugh and, and enjoy some of those positive times. You can make your loved one's favorite dish. Um, after my mom who raised me passed away, uh, there was no question in anybody's mind that when Thanksgiving came around, somebody was going to have to make the lime lemon jello salad. The problem was mom did not leave a recipe behind. And so I think the first year that somebody used um, uh, sweet uh, whipped cream instead of whipping cream, and it had a different flavor, but it was a memorable experience. But a few years later, um, we found that mom had actually sent me the recipe in an email years ago, and I was able to pass that on to my sister who has taken charge and taken over the role of making the Jello salad for our holiday festivities. Um, another way to remember your loved one might be at your place of worship to uh, remember them in prayer um, or uh, I remember in the church that I grew up in you could uh, purchase flowers for the decorations and they would be given in memory of or in honor of your loved one. 
You could buy a gift that your loved one would enjoy and then give it to somebody in need. And as you're, as you're experiencing that, just shopping for that, um, and you think about somebody who will enjoy that gift, okay, it can turn what would have been a lonely or a sad time into something positive. So that was number one with lots of bullet points. And so now I've got number two uh, is to create a new tradition or ritual that accommodates your current situation. So some people find comfort in the old traditions of their holidays. Other people find them unbearably painful. And that can have a lot to do with memories and who was involved and, you know, the roles that people played. And so I encourage you to discuss with your family some of the activities that uh, you want to do or you don't want to do. And so that might include uh, announcing beforehand that somebody new is going to carve the turkey. And you can even turn this into um, kind of a passing of the torch, uh, that it, uh, some kind of ritual or ceremony or tradition that might be passed on for generations that actually help your family in um, dealing with grief because there will come a time when other loved ones pass in the future. And so you be you may be even setting an example for your children or grandchildren on, on how to process grief in the context of holidays. You could create a memory box to fill it with photos or notes of memories that um, your family and friends share. Uh, young children could even include drawings uh, in the memory box. You could make a decorative quilt using favorite colors, symbols, or images to remind you of the person who died. Uh, a friend of mine created a quilt that had family pictures printed onto the fa fabric. And so the technology is such that you can actually have pictures printed on fabric. You could print them on t-shirts, but um, to make to make a quilt. And let's see, I see... Um, uh, hi, Howard. Glad you're here. Um, uh, yes, I, and I will address some of the coping from with grief from events other than death, because one of the things I'm aware of is that um, that holidays can be a lonely time, not just because of the loss of a loved one through death, but also because of divorce and um, because of a move where you move away from a community, um, uh, the loss of a child, or even um, you know, gr grown kids that don't come back home for the holidays. There's a lot of other losses that can be included. And so um, I'm hoping that as I share things today, that um, there'll also be some tips that you can use uh, for other types of situations. And uh, one of the biggest ones I would say would be communicating with your family um, about what you need or um, uh, what you would like to happen. And so let me continue on here. And Howard, if I don't get your, uh, your question, we'll follow up by email, okay? <laughs> Thanks for being here. So some other ways to mem uh, remember your loved one might be to uh, visit the cemetery, uh, decorate a memorial site, uh, place flowers on the table that were their favorite flowers. Um, you could dedicate a Hanukkah candle in memory of a loved one. Uh, you might write a poem about your loved one and read it during the holiday season. You might play your loved one's favorite music or favorite food. Let's see, I guess you're going to play your loved one's favorite music or favorite game. <laughs> you're not going to play the food. Um, you can plan a meal with their favorite foods. So here's a third one that I think uh, could help everybody who is grieving, no matter what the loss. Um, and one thing I'm aware of, I know in my own life, when uh, when I had some major losses, especially of people dying, um, it wasn't the only loss. Um, I was moving. I had I had a couple moves during that time where I left communities of friends and um, had just some bad endings with some uh, organizations. And that um, those kind of losses also um, affected the holidays and uh, just affected how I um, uh, was coping with those things. And so some of these ideas come out of out of those things as well. But my third uh, thought here is to stay off of social media. Now, you know, right, right, <laughs> that most people only post their happiest times on social media, their vacations, their, their time with friends and family, you know, um, you know, if you think of your own <laughs> social media habits, 
Um, do you post pictures and comments when you're feeling miserable, lonely, and discouraged? Most of us don't. Viewing social media photos of other people who are happily engaging in family festivities, um, whole and intact, is an emotional landmine. You may see friends or family gathered and without you and realize that you weren't even invited to the gathering. Um, this can happen, especially if you've got estranged siblings or um, there, you know, there's family dynamics that are problems and, um, and, and that can be really disappointing. And sometimes we surf around on social media hoping for connection, but usually what we get doesn't satisfy. Um, they say it's kind of that a principle around intermittent reinforcement, that sometimes there's a nugget of something that's interesting and rewarding, but um, that sometimes is what draws us to keep coming back uh, for more. But I find that social media um, can be really discouraging uh, when you're dealing with a, a grieving time or an unhappy time, uh, either in your own family situation, your own life situation, and um, I don't recommend it. It's a distorted perspective of reality. Now, if you want to use media, social media to connect with people, you know, I encourage you to reach out in a, um, a message, a Facebook message, or reach out in a, um, a phone call or a, um, a text or an email and uh, reach out to other people and, you know, Tell them how you're doing or ask them for what you need. Invite them to go somewhere with you um, or invite a phone call. Uh, using social media for that purpose would be great. But um, to look at everybody else's happy lives and um, compare it to your own is not a good idea. So another way to um, remember, especially somebody who's died, uh, might be with linking objects. And some people wear a special piece of jewelry or clothing that reminds them of their loved one. Uh, today, I, ha I have on a scarf that came from my grandma. I also have some earrings that uh, came from my grandma who passed away this summer. Um, in the past, I used to wear a, um, a, a pin of a manger scene that was precious that my uh, mother-in-law had given me. And I don't have it this year. It, it, got tucked away in a jewelry box before my move, and I have not unpacked that box yet, so I haven't found it. But, um, uh, you know, some, you might have a watch that belonged to someone that's special. Um, I have a special pan that I, I cook uh, things in. We call it, it has the, it's a cast iron skillet that has the spirit of good taste. And um, uh, I found that it doesn't matter really what I put in there, it comes out tasting really good. And so uh, you'll find me cooking something in that uh, every year. A fifth one, um, this will apply for people uh, regardless of what kind of loss you're, you're dealing with, but um, you need to take care of yourself. And part of the real reality of that is that only you are responsible for your own well-being and happiness. Um, other people can't make you happy. And so a lot of that has to do with um, how, you, how you plan activities for yourself, okay? You can choose to isolate, but that's not usually the best way to deal with grief. And so finding some comforting activities in the weeks approaching the holidays um, so that you have something to look forward to rather than building up the dread of pain um, the holiday could bring. And so I know for me in times when I was uh, far away from family, and they were all getting together for Christmas in Michigan, and I lived in California, and I wasn't joining them. Um, it For me, it meant uh, being intentional about in, uh, attending some Advent services or uh, holiday concerts, um, because I love live music and uh, orchestra concerts. And so I had to be intentional about that and invite somebody to go along with me, uh, because I needed something like that to um, just be part of my uh celebration of Christmas. And you may also need to think about what what is it that could make your Christmas, um, you know, more focused on the meaning of the season or um, uh, more focused on relationships, whatever the holiday is, uh, focused on relationships. And it might take some initiative on your part. When you think of um, the holidays, New activities might be easier, okay? It might be easier to go and celebrate a meal with, if you've got family around, um, at a restaurant instead of at home. But it's also important to be aware of 
other family members uh, that may be grieving or not, that the familiar traditions might be comforting to them as well. And so I really encourage you to have communication with your family about these kind of things. Um, I know this can particularly come up for uh, people who've been divorced and um, maybe, you know, there's the kids are going to one place on Christmas Day and you're going to be alone or um, you can't go. You Maybe you went to your in-laws uh, Christmas party every year and uh, now you're not going. And so this is going to be particularly important to uh, be intentional about planning ahead for what are you going to do that day? Um, is there someone else who's alone on the holiday that you could spend the day with or go to uh, um, a meal with? And uh, being proactive rather than just letting the holiday happen to you and not having a plan. Surrounding yourself with positivity can be helpful. Um, I don't know about you, but when we're, when I'm sad or um, depressed about with grief, I can get caught up in, you know, self-pity and, you know, a lot of negative thoughts in my head. And uh, it's really important to, um, address that. Take captive those thoughts and don't let them just spin out of control about, uh, about life never getting better. Um, and that's where finding people who are positive, who will listen and encourage you, may be important. I want to encourage you not to use alcohol to self-medicate during your grief. Keep in mind that it's only temporary relief. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do, whether it's too much food, um, too much alcohol, um, uh, retail therapy. There's a lot of things that we can do to try to numb our pain, but it's only temporary. And there actually are ways to address grief um, that can uh, help you get on the other side of it so you won't always feel this way. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. but. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm offering today is that if you'd like to talk to me about your holiday plan, um, there's a book now button and I've uh, made uh, three or four slots available uh, that I, in the next week that I can talk to you about your holiday plan. I have a worksheet I'll send you. Um, and just talking through and brainstorming some ideas that might work for you uh, with your particular situation so that the holidays don't just happen to you uh, or that you don't have to hibernate until after New Year's. Some other things that can be helpful for taking care of yourself might be physical exercise. We know that physical exercise um, helps with depression. It helps uh, minimize stress. Um, so if your doctor okays it, uh, get some fresh air, move your body, and um, be part of releasing some of that stress. You might um, write in a journal. Okay, we talked about that last time. Uh, that can be a good outlet for grief, just trying to get the emotions from the inside to the outside. You might even buy yourself something frivolous that you always wanted, but never allowed yourself to indulge in. This might be something that um, you, a, a gift you always wanted, and maybe somebody never gave you that you hoped they would, get, they would give it to you. But, um, you know, take care of yourself during this time. Send yourself flowers. Um, or find a friend that's also single and send them uh, flowers uh, or somebody else who's grieving. And because uh, when we do things for other, others, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, um, that also is a way to bring ourselves uh, joy. I want to encourage you to try the holidays in a new way, if the old way is something that you're dreading. Because grief has a unique way of giving us permission to really evaluate what parts of the holidays you enjoy and what parts you don't. Um, just remember, there's no right or wrong way to, um, to handle the holidays during a time of grief. You get to decide what's right for you uh, and what's going to work for you. And you have your, the right to change your mind. You may accept an invitation and then decide, you know what, that really isn't for me. That's not going to work for me. In video one, we talked about um, some of the ways to handle uh, those things uh, regarding uh, creating an exit plan and things like that. But I'll let you look at video, the part one for that. But friends and family might not have a clue about how to help you through the holidays, and you might not either. As best you can, though, I want to encourage you to let the people around you know what you need and how they can support you. You can give um, your family, uh, friends early notice. If, if you've been the one to host things and you're not going to do that this year, um, let them know. 
Now, there's family members who may not like that, but you'll give them time to adjust and come up with a new plan. Um, so number six here, I hope I numbered one through five correctly, but <laughs> number six is um, do something for others. Sometimes we get tired of grieving. Helping someone else can help take the focus off of our pain and our loneliness. The trouble is that when we're grieving is when we feel the least um, energy to reach out. But you can do it. And here's some thoughts and ideas you can use, especially if you're alone uh, for the holidays. You know, take some time to watch someone's pet while they're away or um, to babysit somebody's child when um, they, they need to go shopping. Uh, serve food at a homeless shelter. Um, some of these volunteer opportunities also bring together other people who find themselves alone for the holidays, and they're finding a way to give joy to other people. And that, that can be a way to make meaning out of a time that otherwise would be lonely and grieving. Volunteer in your community. Deliver Meals on Wheels. Hold babies at the uh, NICU whose parents can't be there. There's always someone in need for, uh, for something that you can offer. Um, I, in fact, I just, uh, I, I just, there's a website that even just provides people to listen uh, for other people. It's, and they're not counselors, but it's free listening for people who are in need. And if you uh, uh, message me after this, I'll, I'll look up the website and share that with you. I just thought it was a neat concept of um, training people just to be listeners, to be there. You can look for people who might be alone, lonely, or in more difficult situations or circumstances than you find yourself and find a way to be a companion to them. Doing something for others can help you as much as them, if not more. Um, it's amazing how many times in grief, sometimes the biggest comfort is to give to others because it helps get the focus off of, of our pain and uh, consider somebody else. We often feel overwhelmed and paralyzed by our emotions. Sadness, feeling of helplessness or hopelessness. When we do something that will make a difference in someone else's life, it often gives us joy as well. So um, here's some other thoughts on that. If you've lost a loved one, gift giving at holiday time can seem a challenge. And um, shopping for gifts and seeing the perfect gift for someone that you love or someone you know um, may be really devastating and maybe very painful as you're going through the store. And, you know, shopping online might be a better option for you. Or finding that special gift and then giving it to someone who could use it. You might purchase something that your loved one would have enjoyed and donate it to a needy family. Or make a donation in a loved one's name to charity or um, a cause that they cherished. Because tragedy can leave such negative feelings, you might consider volunteering to help people in some way that's related to that which caused your anguish. It might be helping other people with cancer or helping other people who've had traumatic loss. Um, uh, there are some other ways to transform that, that grief and that pain uh, and that helplessness uh, around a tragedy that happened into uh, something meaningful and positive for someone else. You could invite a guest who otherwise might be alone for the holidays. You could adopt a needy family during the holiday season. I've had times when I would be far away from my family and um, tempted to feel really sorry for myself because they're all, you know, enjoying Christmas together and I'm far away. And uh, a couple different times I hosted a party inviting friends from a church I had attended several years earlier, people I hadn't seen in a long time. You know, I, it was maybe a week before Christmas or a week after Christmas, maybe between Christmas and New Year's. And many hadn't seen each other in a long time. And so it was a, just a great time to get together. Um, and uh, when I reached out, it was people that um, we just, we hadn't been in, in contact. And so I was really surprised at how positive they were to, uh, to get together. Uh, another thing that I, I've done, especially being separated from family uh, for, a, for long periods of time, that uh, I only get, was able to come back to Michigan about once every two years when, um, when I lived in California. And so what I would do is I would get on Skype and they would get on Skype and put the um, 
uh, put the computer up maybe near the food table or or something and uh, I would I would join them and listen in on the uh, I remember one Thanksgiving and it was just fun to just listen in on the chit chat and conversation that was happening around the table and, and I got to be there with them. Another time I came, uh, I, I participated by Skype for my nephew's birthday party. And um, they actually just set me on the table uh, next to the punch bowl. And so I was, uh, you know, just kind of like this, like you see me on camera. And uh, one of the guests who didn't know me um, had came up to the punch bowl to fill up their punch bowl. And um, I said, hello. And they jumped back because they thought it was just a picture of me <laughs> sitting on the computer screen. And so um, that was kind of funny that um, I was able to participate and actually say hello and greet people and take turns um, uh, interacting with them, uh, even though I was so far away. And the other thing that did was that uh, later it allowed that um, event okay, to be part of my memory. Because in a sense, I was there, even though I wasn't physically there and couldn't hug the people there. Um, I heard what went on and I, I, I was able to participate. And so that may be a way to, um, you know, on FaceTime or, or Skype to participate in a family gathering uh, or a friends gathering that's far away, especially if you've moved away. Um, there's been other times, especially like a New Year's Day, that I would, knew I would be alone. And so I planned... Um, by inviting other people who I knew would be alone for that day, I invited them to bring a dish to share for lunch, and they stayed for hours afterwards. We we played games and things like that, and it turned out uh, that what would have been a, a lonely, very boring day turned into a great memory, and I even made some new friends. So a seventh, um, uh, you notice I have my seven points, but all of them have many bullet points. Um, but my a seventh um, way to deal with the holidays is to maintain an attitude of hope. These feelings will not last forever. No one likes to grieve, but grief is a reminder. It's a natural process that reminds us of the connection we had in the relationship. Grief is the natural response to loss in our lives, but there's also a healing process at work. Um, if you've ever cut your finger with a knife, have you stopped to wonder at the miraculous process that takes place so that the blood begins to clot, the bleeding stops, and eventually the skin on each side of the slice knit together so that you don't even see where you've cut yourself? Our bodies have self-healing mechanisms that um, when our immune system is strong and healthy, nothing stands in the way and those wounds heal. I think of recovery from grief in the same way. Our, our psyche is equipped to heal after loss through a grief process where we tend to evaluate the positive and the negative experiences in the relationship. Um, and this can especially be around communication that we haven't delivered, communication, things that we didn't tell the person, things that we regret, um, things that we miss. And unfortunately, many people around us don't know how to provide an environment conducive to this normal process. Um, when other people are around and they listen with empathy and let you express your sadness or your fears or your guilt or your regrets, your hope and longing without trying to talk you out of your feelings, then you can heal. Um, but what most people do is they tend to say things like, well, uh, you don't have to feel guilty about that, or um, it, it's time you get over it. They say things like that, which can be really hurtful. The reality is that um, it can take five to eight years to recover a normal quality of life after the loss of a spouse. However, with um, a, an intentional grief recovery process, that um, taking the specific steps necessary to heal after loss, we can shorten that time significantly. I find that for many people, whatever the loss, whether it's a divorce, whether it's a, uh, the death of a child, um, the, the, the death of a parent or grandparent, that when we have an opportunity to specifically address those things that preoccupy our minds around those losses, and we process those feelings, again, getting them from inside to outside, oftentimes by talking to somebody who will listen without judgment, um, and just to help us reflect on those experiences, 
then we can come to a place where we can remember the memories without being hijacked by um, regret, by guilt, by um, trauma. And so if, if you'd like to know more about that, I just encourage you to uh, click that book now button and, and schedule a consultation with me. And we'll talk about some of those things because I, I have yet to uh, ex uh, hear of somebody with a particular kind of loss that does not respond to, to that process. And so if what you have done in the past hasn't worked, you know, let, let's talk about that and create some strategies for not just getting through the holidays, but even um, giving you hope for the new year for some relief in some of those areas. Number eight uh, um, is really important. It's important to count your blessings. We know that uh, even the science has shown that gratitude can help our 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 souls when we're 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 feeling depressed, we're feeling sad, grieving. That if we focus on what you're grateful for, you can keep yourself from sinking into a pit of despair or hopelessness during the holidays. Maybe you don't feel like joining uh, other people for a holiday gathering, but you can be thankful that there are invitations from people who care about you. And I, you know, I find there's always something to be thankful for in the fact that um, you can always find someone actually who has a situation that's worse than yours. And if that's what it takes to help you be grateful, start there, okay? Um, I wanna also encourage you to spend some time reflecting on the true meaning of the holidays. Um, reflecting on the true meaning of Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah, um, can inspire hope and gratitude. You know, the commercial aspect of these holidays have intruded on their true meaning in, um, in many of our families and many of our homes. Take some time to remember the pilgrims thanking God for preserving them in their first year in the new world. They too suffered much hardship um, and the loss of many of their uh, members of their community who succumbed to illness in that first year. Yet they took that time to celebrate God's faithfulness and provision. If you celebrate Christmas, you might consider the baby Jesus, the Son of God, born in humble circumstances. He came as a gift of God's love to rescue the world from sin. The first Christmas was wrought with turmoil as Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem for the census. Mary was giving birth to her first child and she was far from home. Surely she longed for the comfort and support of her mother and her female relatives at this precious time. You know, we tend to kind of glamorize uh, some of these holidays, but if you realize how much they were born out of, of pain and suffering, I'm, I'm, I hope that that will give you hope. You know, the Bible even says that Jesus was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He's no stranger to suffering. He's gone through it and he understands your burden and you can cast your burden onto him. If you celebrate Hanukkah, um, as I was researching this, I see that that also, Hanukkah came out of a time of great oppression for the Jewish people. The Greeks had overtaken the land and were um, trying to force the people into idol worship and pagan customs, and thousands of Jews were killed. And those who wanted to obey God's law found themselves breaking the law. When the Maccabees liberated the temple, God did a miracle allowing for one day's worth of oil to last for eight days until they could get more oil. In all of these cases, the celebrations come out of hardship, suffering, and pain. As you reflect and meditate on the history of these holidays, I hope you will learn about people who had faith in the, faith, uh, in the face of great adversity. They found hope in the midst of trials and distress. And the trials and distress didn't last forever. I hope you can find hope in that too. My mission is to help people who are grieving transform their heartache into renewed purpose and spiritual growth. Let's talk some more and see what we can come up with to help you heal your heart, not just for the holiday season, but also um, in the new year. Thank you for joining me for this presentation for Hope for Holiday Grief, part two. I'm Deborah Bronstad, and I look forward to talking with you soon. 
If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments uh, below, and I will see what I can do to address those and get back to you. Take care.